Hello and welcome to CS230 Web Information Processing and to this short series of lessons on code-based access of a Node.js REST API using jQuery. This is lesson three. Now we're going to look at developing the REST API using a Node.js backend. It's a framework-free um, application because it just uses pure Node.js and some of the default um, libraries that come with it, like HTTP and so forth. We're not using a framework for processing or building APIs specifically like Express. We can do that and see that a bit later. Um, I just want to show you some of the core stuff first. Okay, so we saw the application running already. So here was the, the program running. I mean, we can see how it stop we'll stop this one running. Just control C, it stops it. And we can um, run it using node index.js and it starts and it works and you can see that it's running on port 8000. So we have a look at the code to make that work now. Okay, And we can just verify that, that every time it starts, we'll go back to here um, and I'll run, I'll just get the user database here. Okay, um, And we see it should be empty because there's no database. And, and the whole point of this application is that it's an in-memory database. Okay, It holds the data in memory. It doesn't actually connect to a database. And the reason it works like this currently is because you have an actual um, assignment to be able to do that part, and I don't want to give you all the code, um, but I'll talk about how to connect to databases in the lectures in the um, week seven. Okay, so let's let's go there. let's uh, go there and have a look and look at the code. So this again was this part was the code, which was the index.html that's served by the service. Okay, so the code is not particularly long. It's 128 lines with comments, so it's not a long program, you know. And again, the, the this one here was a lot of general, this, this one is long, like I guess it's, well, not that long, it's 272, huge amount of code commenting in here, a lot of the code is generated, so there's not a, a lot of writing code in this particular one. Okay, but we have this um, this demo, and so we do need some Node.js modules in order to make it work. And the, the, the purpose of this particular application here is that it should do two things. First of all, it should respond to queries to serve the form, that index.html. And that's the first task it needs to do. Because in other words, if it's, if it's called and it doesn't get what it expects, in other words, to be able to do something with the API, then it, um, and the routes it expects, which are slash um, API slash user, because it's only interested in working with users, then it serves this form. Now I could set it up that it serves it um, you know, it can handle all sorts of different kinds of routes, but I didn't, I just went for an one, so we can see. What I've done is I've extensively commented this, so you can see what's happening every single step here. All the green are comments, okay, so it should help you. So we need to look at HTTP, which is the um, the module that we're going to use. Now, really we would use Express, I guess, you know, in a more, um, in a more um, um, developed solution, but here we're going to use HTTP, because we've seen it before, and uh, and we're interested in URL that allows us to be able to extract a root because we, we have two routes. We're interested in slash or slash index.html, for example, or slash API slash user. These are the two things we're interested in. Everything else gets ignored. We're interested in the query string, of course, that contains the body of the post request that's sent. So those data that we wrapped up and sent, they're wrapped up in the query string, okay, or in the body section. File system, we want to be able to read files because we've got that index.html that we want to be able to read. And we're going to run on port 8, 8000. Okay. So we're going to create this server. So that creates a server. So that's a simple, straightforward. So now we've created a server. So now, now the database is just an array. Okay. So it's an in-memory database that holds JSON records. And they are actually extracted from the post requests and pushed into this. So that's our database as such. Not very complex, but it works for us. Okay. So we need to listen for requests from the client. So the server kicks up and starts when we start the server. Um, and we start the server, you can see server that listens, you know, and all it does is outputs this message here and listens on this port. So once it's done, it's listening. So we have to say what happens when we get a request from the user, okay? So it, we have this, this function, of course, this callback function, which deals with a request and a response objects. And so we can extract the current route and that pulls out the URL. So we get and decide whether we're looking for a slash or a slash API slash user. Now I'm just handling these. We could have a default switch here that handles the current route and, and deals with routes that we don't expect. I'm not doing that here, okay? And just get an error otherwise. But you know, I wanted to keep it simple. But you could do that. You know, you could say, look at APIs that user, and then all other requests would just send the index at HTML. It would be not difficult to do that. Okay. So we're able to get the method. We need to know whether the, the we can get the method then from the request. We need to know whether the HTML. Um, TP request type was a post, 
because it is, we're going to create data. If it was a get, we're going to retrieve data. And then remember, we could also have a put or an update if we wanted to update data in the database or delete data from the database. And then, you know, we have the request body here, which that, that will contain the actual extracted data for a little bit later. So we'll determine the route. So we're going to handle, if no, as like I said, if no API route was made, then we could have the default route to be slash. Okay, but I haven't implemented that. Okay, I'm specifically looking for this. So if it is this um, slash, then we read the file, get the index.html function, and then we generate some HTTP headers to say that the content type that we're returning is text HTML. We're sending a, a message, a 200 header. We say everything is fine, you know. And then when we're finished, we just uh, return the data, which is the index of HTML. And that's how you do this kind of work with file handling and response for HTTP. And then we finish, we break, that's it done. We've handled that and we go back to listening again. So the next step then is to handle requests where we, we actually have a, uh, a, a route which is the API slash user. So we've two scenarios here. So we're, we make a route to this, a call to this particular one, and we want to have a post request or a get request. If we make a post request, then we're going to extract the data that's been submitted as part of the post request and push it into the database. And if it's a get request, we're going to take the information from that database and send it back to the user. So we need to look for the two methods. So if the method was, was post that was used to send, then we have to read the data from the post request. And this is how we read the data, okay? So we get this um, on the data chunk, and we continually get all the information from the post request until we're done. So when we're done, the request body contains all the information. Now we have to determine whether the post request was came from a form or came from some kind of API. And we talk to you a little bit about that a little bit later. So you can see how that works. So we've got two options. We have the um, an application X, www, form and code, URL encoded. And that's basically, we've got a form been sent. And there are three kinds of forms, you know, and that information, two, three times a way that you can send data, okay? And that's described in this index.html here, okay? So, I've, you know, you have a um, X, www, form and URL encoded. And again, that just basically sends a form. Multi-part form data that allows you to upload files and text plain, which is a new form and that just sends data without any kind of encoding. So we're going to be using this one here. Okay, if we handle that, we're able to get the headers and, and look at this. We can also be to just take JSON as well, but we're not send, just sending JSON. There's two ways, you know, you can do this and um, you can send JSON or you can send it using this form here. So um, I'm just handling both actually, you know, so we might want to be able to call this API from something other than the form that we've built. Okay, so we finish reading all the information, we get the data, and if we're this form, then we're able to parse the body and update the data. So we get the data, the user data, and then we parse that data, and then we push that data into the database here, okay? And it's it, okay? So we either parse the query string if it's coming from the form, otherwise we parse JSON if it's coming from um, some other request. And we can make that happen. And uh, then we just log the data to the, to the display and we respond with headers to say, yeah, everything was fine. And we just were able to respond it. So that was fairly straightforward. And then, and we can say that the data was added to the database. And look, you know, we're sending this information back, the user first name, user last surname, and that's the information that ultimately gets displayed in the modal. If we want to handle a get request, that's straightforward. You know, it's a get, we're going to send back JSON and we're going to take the database and convert it to a string, formatted string, and respond with that data with a header 200 to say everything is fine, respond the data, and it's done and easy. That's it, it's not overly complex, um, but that's how you do it, and all of these will work in the exact same way if you're doing it in this particular form. So you create a service, you set up your modules, you set up your database, I'll show you how to do that, of course, in the lecture, it's a little bit more complex, and um, set up, uh, a response to the various requests that happen, handle the various routes that are coming, and handle the different um, ways, the method types that are used, and then listen. And that's our service. It's not overly complex. And they all work the same way. If you get it once, you can keep doing it over and over again. And that's the end of this lesson. Thank you very much for watching.